Dzień dobry, witamy wszystkich bardzo serdecznie w kolejnym odcinku programu Labanda na portalu pobandzie.pl. Ja nazywam się Krzysiek Sałaga, a dziś moim gościem jest zawodnik Tauronu Włókniarza Częstochowa, Mikkel Mikkelsen. Hi Mikkel. How are hey, you? hello. I'm good, I'm good. Thank you for inviting me for this little chat. Yeah, no worries, no worries. Thank you for accepting the invitation. Uh, Mikkel, it's been already six or seven years that you are living in Poland. Uh, don't you miss Denmark? Uh, not at all. Um, to be honest, you know, moving here in, in 2017 was, uh, was difficult in some ways, but uh, also in other ways it was, uh, was making life easier for me. But of course it, it took some time to, to get used to everything and, you know, find my, my routines and stuff. But, uh, now I'm fortunate enough to, to consider Poland my home. Uh, I've, I've said it many times in the past years that, you know, I'm, I still have a Danish passport, but uh, I, I consider Poland my home. So uh, I don't miss Denmark. Of course, I miss not being super close to family, but I'm only one and a half hour away in, in a plane. So uh, it's, it's not that difficult. So uh, I'm enjoying life. Well, that's true. But is there any connection, any flight from Katowice to Copenhagen? I have both uh, Katowice to Copenhagen and, and I also have Krakow to, to Copenhagen. So I have plenty of options and both airports are, are close to Rybnik. So it's uh, it's pretty straightforward with the logistics. All right. All right. No, happy to hear that. But uh, is there something special that you like about Polish people or there is nothing? Uh, well, ob obviously, uh, I must like something because I'm still here after, after that many years. Um, You know, a lot of people ask me all the time why why I live in Rybnik because it's it's a small city and and nothing is happening here and and actually that's what I love about the city. You know, it's it's quiet here. It's it's not a lot happening, uh, and it suits my my lifestyle a lot. I like to remain private and uh, you know I, I I'm not a big city guy. I don't like the big city life and uh, you know the life I have here in Rybnik suits uh, suits me very well and. Uh, in general, I, I, I think Polish people are, you know, very uh, welcoming and, and they've been treating me me with respect and been very, very kind to me. So, uh, yeah, uh, I feel very lucky. Mm -hmm. Okay, so you live a normal life in Rybnik, so I, su I assume you, you go shopping on your own. Of course I do. I, I shop on my own, I cook on my own, <laughs> I clean on my own. Um, All right. Yeah, but where, where do you go shopping? Do you like biggest shopping malls or you, you've got some small grocery store in, in your district? Uh, what are your ways? Uh, you know, obviously it depends what you need. You know, if you need like fruit and vegetables, we have so many like small pop-up uh, local farmers who have like their own pop-up shops uh, around the city. Uh, so if you want the best stuff, you go to them. Otherwise, uh, Little is, is one of my go-to places because... I'm familiar with that. We have that in Denmark too. And if you need to do a big shopping, you can always go to Kaufland. All right. All right. Good. So we, we did some adverts for, for the company uh, Schwartz in this case, but uh, never mind. Uh, good. Uh, but there must be also a thing that you, um, that you dislike in Poland no? because nothing can be perfect. I know you are happy here, but maybe there is something, maybe you can give us Polish people some feedback how to behave differently to be nicer to the others? I don't know. It's, it's, it's hard to say, really. Um, I've been, you know, I've been very happy with living here for, for so many years, and, and I still am. Um, you know, they, they could learn to drive a little bit better, maybe. That, is, <laughs> uh, that, that might be the only thing. Um, you know, Poland is not so much different with, from, like, from Denmark when you consider the weather, the klima. The summer is a little bit warmer here and, and the winter is a little bit colder. But other than that, it's, it's in some ways similar to Denmark. Another good thing about Poland is, it's, it's, you know, we have a lot of mountains here and I'm close to them as well. Denmark is flat. We don't have that. Um, but I guess, I guess if there is one thing that could be a little bit better in Poland is the infrastructure. Other than that, it's, it's pretty good. Mm, okay, now it's good to hear that. But you just mentioned the mountains, but I read in one of the interviews that you are not skiing during your career because it's too risky to get injured. Is it true? No, that's not true. I never okay. said that. All right. Um, I, I grew up skiing. I've been skiing for 15 or 16 years. Uh, I was skiing last year. 
in Livigno in Italy, and I've been doing that for probably 10 plus years uh, with my family in Livigno. Um, I have tried skiing in Poland, but when you're so used to skiing in, in big ski country, uh, ski nations like Austria or, or Italy, you know, skiing in Poland is it, it's not on the same scale. You know, it's it's smaller, it's more people there because it's, it's not big ski resorts. Um, so if I want to go skiing, I'm I'm gonna go south. I'm not gonna do it here in Poland. But if I really want to go skiing, I have the opportunity to do it here. But like I said, when you grew up skiing in in that kind of big ski nations, then uh, yeah, skiing in Poland is 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 on a smaller scale. Mm -hmm. Sure. You also mentioned that you are skiing with your family, so probably you also mean your closest family, like mom or dad. And uh, tell me, how often do you see them now during the during the season? Because as we know, for many many years, dad is not helping you uh, as your as your teammate. Let's say, how often do you see each other, guys? Um, you know, during the season, it's it's not too much, uh, especially the the last season. I was very busy uh, with racing all matches in Denmark and I also signed up to race a little bit in Sweden. Plus the GPs, SEG, Polish League, uh, national team commitments and stuff like that. So during the season, it's it's not a lot. Um, but um, to be honest, after I've, I've spent way more time in Denmark after the season this year and also a little bit here in, in 2024. Uh, compared to, to the last, I want to say the previous probably three years. Um, so I've spent, spent a lot of time with my dad. Uh, the last last few months, uh, two weeks ago, we were in the, on the Canary Islands cycling for one week. And uh, uh, I've been spending a little bit more time in Denmark. Uh, it's been good for me. And uh, I, I try to get home when it makes sense, but, you know, Sometimes it's just not worth it going home for maybe one, one and a half day, fly to Denmark and then fly back. Um, so it's probably not as much as I would like to, but I'm super close with my dad. And, and you know, we talk every day on the phone, sometimes even several times a day. We cycle online on Swift together and, you know, we we do other things together, which might not be, you know, in real life, but, uh, you know, I can't really complain. Uh, I chose this life. I've been used to it for so many years, being away uh, when I raced in, in the UK and stuff like that. So, you know, I've grown up being used to, to being away from my family. So it doesn't affect me as much. You you would always like to spend more time with your family, especially when you, you live in a different country. But um, it's it's not that bad at all. Yeah, that's true. I know it too well, I, I can admit. Uh, but um, yeah, you said you, you are just growing up a little bit or you've grown up already. You are turning 30 this this August. You're going to be you're going to have a, a three in the front of you. And uh, I'm not going to ask you about a big celebration because I know that during the season there is no time for a big celebration. No. But a, <laughs> a kind of another question, because our generation has got like half of a century ahead, let's say. Now we're going to turn 80, maybe 90 if we are lucky. What do you think how, how the life or how the world's going to look like in 50 years? I don't think I'm the right person to ask. Um, I, I can't predict the future. You know, a lot of stuff is happening all the time right now. You know, electric cars are becoming more popular. There's so much focus on, on the environment and, and, and stuff like that. Um, how the world is even looking in, in five to 10 years, I have, I have no clue. There is all these new things coming every second year or third year for the for the last many years and it's it's so hard to predict what's gonna happen um and and i try not to think about it i just focus on my own life you know i take it take it day by day um whatever happens in 50 years i couldn't even tell you maybe we'll be be flying around in planes instead of driving i don't know all right. Good, Mikael. All right. Uh, yeah, so let's come back maybe to some to more tangible questions in this case. Uh, what is the meaning of 155 for you? So it's, it's a kind of kind of a funny question because when they first introduced the, the writing numbers, obviously the, the GP series reserved 1 through 18 um, and 15 is my lucky number. Mm -hmm. So one day I was 
at uh, KW, uh, KW's headquarters in Chesterhova. And I was like, I want number 15. And they were like, ah, oh, we can't do that because that is reserved for the GP series. And I was like, mm -hmm. oh, then maybe we'll make 115. Mm -hmm. But there was um, the visual of the, the 115, it didn't suit my, like, maybe we just made one side five. I was like, oh, that looks so much better. It's, it's more suiting for the eye. It's just step by, you know, it's, we, we've gotten to a point now where it's too late to change your number anyway. I'm not <laughs> going to change it. People know me, know me by 155. So, um, I've, I've, I've stuck with it. And, and now I just, I like that. Um, obviously 15 is my lucky number, but, uh, you know, I've, I've not done so bad for myself with the one time frame. Yeah, that's true. Definitely not being a three times European champion and having other successes. You, you are not doing bad in Speedway, definitely. But it's the first time I, I hear that somebody is not focusing on the numbers itself, but on how they look like. It's something, something new for me. Well, you know, it's, it's how it is with a lot of stuff. You know, you, you need to think about obviously the colors I have on my, my race suit and covers is colors I want, but you know, when you design how it looks and stuff like that, it needs to be uh, visibly suiting for the eye. It needs to be nice to look at. Um, it also needs to be put together a good way. So, you know, sponsors are visible and stuff like that. So for me, it's maybe not about having, having the coolest thing you can have, and like a lot of stuff happening, but having it more you know, when people say, oh, that's put together nice and oh, sponsors, they look visible, they're easy to see. So it's, it's more about making it pleasing for the eye and, and maybe not so much about yeah, yeah, making it the, the most, let's say, expressive one. Sure, sure. I, I can follow your logic completely. It's just something new for me that somebody has got so much to tell about this, how it looks like and doesn't say, okay, it's just my birthday or is, is it my lucky number or whatever. No? So that's... <laughs> That's interesting, interesting to hear. All right, good. So maybe we'll uh, jump a little bit uh, to, uh, yeah, I, I cannot really name this topic because it's hard for me, but definitely you are fully fit and definitely you, you look really amazing. You are in a top shape always, let's say, but maybe you've got some weaknesses, like for example, I don't know, sweets or cigarettes every week, or I, I don't know. Is there something that you are doing unhealthy? Um. Yeah, like like you said, um, you know, my, my my condition is something I take very serious and I take that serious three hundred and sixty five days a year. I don't I don't turn off after the season, you know, I I stay uh active. I maybe put down the intensity a little bit, but I still work out once or twice a day, even in the off season because it makes life easier when you get into like January. You don't need to start from zero, you just maybe need to up the intensity 10 to 20 percent to to kind of like build that little bit of um top form you need before the season starts um i do have a few weaknesses especially sweets has always been it's been a weakness of mine um it's not something i eat every day but you know once in a while i will i will buy something uh, my probably my biggest weakness is donuts it's uh, something i really really like and uh, we just so happen to uh have very good donuts in Poland as well. So um, it makes life a little bit difficult. Um, but other than that, no, not really. I don't have, have a lot of weaknesses. Uh, but I always try to find my weaknesses and try to improve on this one. I've been working closely with a sports psychologist since last year. Um, so, you know, we found a few things that, that we've been working on. Um, over the winter and we're still working on them now. And uh, I think that's gonna, gonna improve me both as a writer, but also as a person. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's, it's, that, that's definitely true. But as you can see, we are slowly going towards Speedway yeah? after a quarter and an hour of talking about different things. And yeah, obviously uh, not gonna ask you directly about the next season, last season and so on, but more or less like general, there is really, a uh, a big competition in the in the highest level and there are sometimes really small small details that uh, decide mm -hmm. whether you're gonna be first or, or the last in the heat and my question would be how much would you pay for knowing this detail that is so crucial that is key to success 
nothing. All right. Why? Because that would make life easy. Okay. I don't like, I don't like easy. Um, I like the challenge and, uh, this is why I'm trying to find things, uh, that can help me improve all the time. Of course, saying that I wouldn't pay anything for it is, it might sound a little bit stupid now because we are exploring ways, uh, and buying stuff to, to try and, you know, close the gaps to, to some of the other riders. But I feel like probably, especially last year, the, the, the main problem for me was like mentally, um, for the last, I want to say the last two years coming into the GP series, we've just not gotten the best start because we've been having some issues with equipment or stuff like that. I know it's, it's the same old, it sounds, sounds like an excuse and stuff like that. But last year, especially I was really struggling and, and, you know, going into the GPs last year mentally, I was just not there. You know, I, I didn't want to be there. Um, you know, I was not going up to the, to the start tape, super confident like I did the previous year where I knew that it was only up to me. You know, I was going up to the start line, not knowing if it was going to be good or if it was going to be bad. And, you know, that was the kind of mindset I came into uh, a lot of the GPs last year, but also a lot of the, the league matches with Chester Hove, especially in the second part, because we were struggling so much with equipment. You know, normally I wouldn't care. I would go up to the start and be like, if I, if I don't make the start, I will pass everyone or, you know, I'll make the start and they won't see me or, or stuff like that. And, you know, we were just struggling a lot last year. And, and this is why I said, you know, I've been working very hard on the, the men, mental aspect of it um, because there was definitely a, an area where I could improve. So I just need to find that happy medium. I need to have a little bit more fun last year. So uh, a lot of stuff going on, you know, personally around me um, and also with, with the equipment. So we've been working out to eliminate um, all these issues and uh, we're going into to this year on a, you know, with a fresh, fresh open mind um, and hopefully uh, all the hard work we, we've been doing through the, the off season is going to pay off. Yeah. yeah. Everyone is keeping their fingers crossed for it. Uh, you are short from uh, starting the, uh, the camp, the preparation camp in Kalpe. And many people were saying that, okay, now you are copying more or less Moto Lublin yeah, because they used to go there uh, before. Uh, like, it, it, does it have any influence? Are you trying to copy the uh, preparations of Lublin in this case or it's not the case? It's not the case at all. Um, you know, I'm not going to get into too many details and, and, and stuff about this, but there is, you know, it's no lie that, that what, you know, Moto Lublin have been doing for many years now is it's, it's very professional. And, uh, I guess for, from a marketing perspective, it looks very good. And then, you know, also team building wise, it, it is good. And, uh, you know, that is something we, we definitely, you can say, maybe we copied that a little bit, but I think it's not about Calvary. It's not about the place we're going to. And also you need to remember our new, uh, uh, team manager got uh, me he was in rush love as well they've been going different places for cycling and, and doing team building stuff as well so i think the only thing we are focusing on here is is the team building aspect and not so much where we are you know we could have gone to freaking finland for uh, skating on ice you know it, it, it would probably have had the same result but uh it's it's about the team building aspect. It's is nothing to do with copying anyone. We just <laughs> you know we want to go somewhere. Uh, you know a lot of speedo riders they they cycle nowadays. Kelp is still the cycling mecca. It's it's a beautiful place, uh, and it's it's a safe place to to cycle to where all you know drivers and stuff they're used to cyclists being on the road all the time, and you know they show respect. Um, so I think it's more about just going there. You know spending time on the bike together talking, training, and just doing other activities together to try and improve the team spirit going into to the new season. Mm -hmm. Cool. Yeah, the, the team is not really new. It is only one person that has changed. Now. So Jakub Michkovac was replaced with, with uh, your landsman, uh, Mats Hansen. So uh, yeah. there, there was many questions already about this. So I'm, I'm going to uh, 
say, save you from this. But I wanted to ask you the, the last thing uh, concerning Vuknyash here, uh, because I know that you've got loads of respect to Maxim Drabik, and that's your, it's a good friend of yours. So, you know, I'm not going to ask you about your feelings, but just that from my pragmatic point of view, do you think, is there any chance that, I don't know, in three or five years, I could sit here and talk to him, like with a normal interview, or is he go on, going to be avoiding interviews for the last, the last, the rest of his career? I, I don't know if I'm the right person to ask about that. Uh, you know, that, that might be a, a question for, you need to ask Maxim next time you see him. Uh, I, I can't really speak for him. Nor do I want to, because it's not my place to to comment on that one. But you know, I I get it. You know, I've been the same for many years. I I don't do a lot of interviews, and I try not to. Um, it's just you know, you do interviews and stuff like that, and some people they make it into something it's not, and you know, there can come some good PR out of it, but it can also come some bad PR because people are always gonna have their own opinion about everything. Um, and especially in the speedway world, you know, it can be a be a toxic environment at times. Um, and, you know, for some people, they, they that's just one thing they just eliminate from their life because it's one less thing to, to think about and it's, you know, potentially less problems. Um, but we are also public figures, uh, which is why I'm, I'm still doing some interviews like this, but I'm not doing a lot um, because, like I said earlier, I'm a private person too. And, uh, yeah, you know, sometimes I just prefer to stay under the radar, but then also, you know, with the, the job we have, it's, it's hard to, to stay under the radar. So sometimes you just need to embrace it, uh, embrace it because we are, you know, public figures. Um, so you know, you need to, to show up sometimes. Yeah, sure, sure. So uh, thank you very much for this. And also, I feel special now, now that, that I got this possibility to have this interview also for you. Definitely remaining pragmatic here. It's, you know, it's not only about risking saying something strange or being understood uh, not really well, but it's also a chance to, you know, to show yourself to the sponsors, not to show yourself to the publicity. But I fully understand that no, not always everyone is liking it. So don't worry, I, I wasn't trying, you know, to, to get something that I shouldn't. No, no, no. It, you know, it is what it is. Um, at the end of the day, we are all entitled to our own opinion. And, and I've also been in some controversies uh, in the past because, you know, I speak my mind. Sometimes I don't have a filter either. And, and you know, I will always be, be honest and give my, my honest opinion about something. Um, sometimes people, they are they're happy with that sometimes they're not and you know that's just uh, that's just the way life works i guess mm. yeah that's why i asked you about this situation because like you mentioned before you were more or less like maxim a couple of years ago you know, where you were like maybe not offended but you didn't want to talk to anyone because of previous uh, events you know, that that you were not understood in a proper manner in this case so that's yeah. why i was you know i was just trying to uh, to get some some knowledge from you on on this matter but i fully understand you and also maxim even though i'm still hoping that i'm going to sit here you know, with him in a year or two or three maybe one day maybe one day good michael what can i wish you for the next season i don't know you should ask yourself that question <laughs> I, I don't know what you want to wish me um <laughs> You know, just uh, hard to say, you know, just uh, keep your fingers crossed for a good season, a healthy one. And, uh, you know, hopefully everything is, is going to work out the way I want it to. Exactly. No? So this is, this is what, I, what I want to wish you also from, from the deepest of my heart. Have some freeze, have uh, fun during riding, because I think this is the, the most, the biggest part of it. And that is if... the main objective this year, for sure. Exactly. And if you if you can reach this, then definitely you're going to have big success this season. So thank you very much once again for, for accepting the invitation. Uh, Pleasure. Mikkel Mikkelsen was our guest. So uh, I'm going to turn to Polish now. To był kolejny odcinek programu La Banda na portalu Po Bandzie. Ja nazywam się Krzysiek Sałaga, a moim gościem był, jak widzicie Państwo, Mikkel Mikkelsen. Dziękuję bardzo. Dziękuję bardzo, do zobaczenia. So, now we are offline, nobody